Uh, we are doing a political subject tonight, and we call it Gay Republicans. Now, this is the shortest intro ever, because our, <laughs> our simple question is, why do they exist anyway? <laughs> Anybody got any observations? <laughs> I do. Okay, tell us. I, well, basically, it has nothing to do with my sexuality. It has everything to do with constitutional government, physical responsibility, and local rule. Those are, those are just key things. Uh, the Constitution is all built around local communities having local rule. That's one of the values of Wilton Manor. Uh, us being a community in terms of LGBTQ, we come together and we can make rules and regulations that um, relate to us as a community, that are most relevant to us as a community, whereas the rest of the United States is not necessarily have the same values or perspective. And that's what local rule is about. So will the Joe, we, is Republican? No. Well, it could be. <laughs> I don't think it could. <laughs> Joe, you, you, you've been to CPAC. I have. I yeah, have. Which is, is uh, I could not buy a ticket to CPAC. Uh, we said this. Uh, not that I would. Wait, what, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what is CPAC? CPAC is the well, conservative. CPAC is the Conservative Political Action Committee. It is the most so, powerful forum in the United States about conservative it, issues. Yes, it is. Yeah, and yeah. you've been to the Republican National Convention. And I have been to the Republican where that that guy got elected. Where Trump got elected. Yes, uh, you, you, Trump. And, and we're working on 2020 now. We work. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so yeah, we're working on you a little bit. Yeah. So we're working on taking that back. You about that. Yeah. We're working on Trump in 2020. Who agrees with They're that? They're going to be in 2020. Right they are. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let me give you a couple facts about the convention that uh, in 2016. I was part of the delegation from Washington D.C. We had 18 delegates going from Washington D.C. Almost 50 percent of our delegates were gay. We had the first out lesbian who participated in the platform committee. And while the major networks did not carry it, every major speaker for the entire week brought up LGBTQ rights and there were standing ovations around the- Because they weren't getting no. the vote. <laughs> no, the no, no, right. no, they weren't getting no, the LGBT vote. This, this did shock me because I, when, when Joe, Joe told me this, I did a lot more research on this and I was really shocked. It's one of the things that we don't hear. There is a, a pretty sizable number in the gay community that identify as conservative or Republican. Well, yeah, they'll overlook yes. a little homophobia as long as their candidate's still the right amount of racist. Right. Um, yes. That, you know, that, the question, this topic is, it's as um, old as, as uh, what Time. is the meaning of life? Um, why are they they're gay Republicans? Your answer, Joe, would fly with me if we weren't in the time and age and period that we are now. Um, if we were in a John McCain uh, period, I would, I would say, okay, that's understandable. Um, but we are in, a, in, in an age where you have a man that is, at, forget about his politics, as a man, he is so disgusting that I, the question is, why would anybody, these, in this day and age, Saying that you are a, um, a gay Republican is to me as ridiculous as saying you are like a roach parade. Well, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Or chickens, chickens for Colonel Sanders. It really is self-deceiving. <laughs> it's, it, it's counterproductive. Wait, did you it, say chickens for <laughs> Colonel Sanders? Club, club, bitch. <laughs> club, club, bitch. <laughs> It don't make any sense to me. I, so I, I, I think that I, I think that this is a a question that I would really like um, to revisit uh, when we get Trump out of office. <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. There's a way to get there with that. Like I, I am a registered Republican technically, and it's because we live in Florida. You are. I am a yeah, registered really, yeah, Republican. You, you've heard this before, and it's because in Florida you don't get to vote in the primaries yeah. if you don't um, register with one party or the other. And it, that is absolutely ridiculous. Wait, 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 wait. Napoleon, infiltrating. you're registered in, as a Republican in Florida. Why? Because I don't want Rick Scott to win. And if I could vote against that, that means that I have to right, infiltrating. <laughs> that is absurd. Is it like a Trojan horse? <laughs> I, I, have, I, have, I, I have no real vote in the Democratic primary. I have an actual say in the Republican primary. And if I have any power in that, that then I'm going to do it. I Absolutely. I'm going to do that. But <laughs> let's, I want to come back for a minute over right. here to what Power said, right. because I hear you, 
But the important things about what this president has done is he's keeping the nation safe. He's dealing with overseas and international relations. He's creating jobs. He's creating jobs. Where? Income is on the rise. Unemployment is down. So we're sec more secure. Jobs are increasing. He's doing all the things that make this country a great country. Yeah, actually, Obama, actually Obama created more jobs than, than Trump. And all Trump is doing is really keeping things on trend. Even Trump can't fuck that up. But, um, you know, my question to you, I really have to ask this. If, if there was some way to raise Hitler from the grave and have Hitler be the president and you knew that he was going to do all these great things would that be okay for you to stand behind a man like that uh, i would uh, in other words what in other words is, does his does his accomplishments even if all those were true does his accomplishments for our country to you diminish and negate him as a person so you can sideswipe and excuse his racism his his um, homophobia, his bigotry, his xenophobia, his sexism, all that, as long as he's doing what you believe yeah. is good for the country. So um, he is not homophobic. Um, he's absolutely he is not yes, racist. Okay. Yes, he absolutely is. Yes, he absolutely is. As the Mexican at the oh, yeah. table, I'm going to tell you, yeah, he absolutely is. Uh, okay. As the bad well, well, hombre. First of all, yeah, let's, first of all um, let's get really specific. Yes, first, yes. From, I can, okay. I can, I can give general, you a history right. lesson starting from the you 1970s. You ask him a question, allow him to answer the question. What's your answer? We want to be specific. I, I, I've known the man since, not known him personally, but from New York. There is nothing racist in him. There is nothing homophobic. Uh, he has more LGBTQ people working for him in his enterprises than any other uh, organization or enterprise on, on in the United States. Yeah, they're going through training so, right now. Huh? I, I they're not. I, I they're find welcome. It they're a part I, of it. I do find it interesting that somebody that's probably not and probably never will be affected by racism can speak with such a surety um, that this president, who has done and has um, exhibited racist behavior dating back to the 70s. Wait, wait. So, I want to clarify so the observation you've just made. Did you just say, and I'm not sure, so that's why I'm clarifying it. Did you say because he is an older white man that he is talking about uh, support of Donald Trump and conservative issues with Republicans? that that's not acceptable because he's not black or Latino no, or... that's not what I said. Okay. First of all, I didn't say anything about his age. Next thing, <laughs> okay, the next thing I said, somebody who is not going to be or has ever been uh, affected by racism can sit here with such a surety. Yes, because you're white. I said that. <laughs> Just because you're white, you uh, cannot be, uh, you have not been affected by racism. I think it's very interesting that you can say with such a surety that he's never been racist. Meanwhile, meanwhile, those of us that see the things that he has done that we consider racist, because we have experienced th that racism, I think are better uh, in a better position to tell you, yes, that's racist. I recognize that because it's happened to so me. So let me, let me ask you a question, okay? Because you're pointing to in the 70s and 80s for him. Starting. All the way start, starting. Starting. Not start, just, no, no, I'm not pointing to it. I'm saying that's no, the start. My, the, bring it all the way back. So let me, so let me, let me ask you, just, just because I came out, you know, six years ago, and I grew up in the South in a very conservative space. And I, uh, two years ago, I was watching a documentary on the Log Cabin Republicans on the fights that took place during the Reagan era over the proposition, which they led the defeat of in California. But it was all about uh, educators who were gay not being allowed to teach in schools. And I can tell you for a fact, because I was in the evangelical and in church, I was on the other side of that because I was getting ready to raise kids. I was on the other side of that. Now, I didn't understand myself. I didn't understand the gay community. I didn't know anybody that was gay, right? So are you gonna call me a racist or a sexist because I didn't know it then in the 80s? Now, even though I've come out and I've changed? But he Just, hasn't changed. But, but, uh, wait, but he has uh, But first of all, wait, first of all, you are wait, anybody- In defense, and in, in defense, Joe's observation is really interesting to me because he specifically says 
I was this, I am not that. When do I get forgiven? That's what he just put on the table. That's right. And you, and you move it away from that to Donald Trump. His specific point is, I am not that anymore. And you say? Well, good. I'm glad that you've learned. I'm glad that you've evolved. And I'm glad that you found yourself. That's important. And, and I say, you were that. And whether you knew it or not, that still, right. that still does not excuse the fact that you were that. So basically what I'm saying is, if you were racist and you're saying, well, I didn't know any better. Okay, you didn't know any better, but you're still racist. So you're still racist. Are, are you going to tag somebody um, and basically count them out because of something that happened 30 years ago? If they don't no, know. Or, I, or, no, or, no, no, no. Or are I'm you going to allow no, them wait, Are no, you going to allow wait, them wait, wait, I'm not going, I, wait, I wouldn't do that. Wait, no. wait, wait. That's where we're going to end this segment. And the reason we're going to end this segment is there is so much interesting conversation to come on this. And what we are going to explore is uh, this broad question. You, you put lots of interesting things out on the table. Y'all put lots of interesting things out on the table. We're not going to resolve it here. We're going to continue to talk about it. But we can all feel resolved that Donald Trump with Macaulay Culkin uh, in the 1990s in Home Alone 2 we can all agree to that, right? Is that, is that at least one good thing that we can agree he did? This no? is true. Yes, this no? is true. No. Yes. Oh, man. No Christmas love here. Jeez, I guess Halloween is it. I want to say one other thing that's interesting to me. Um, the bar um, expresses an opinion toward these opinions. The one thing that I do want to voice, and I voice this broadly, and I know all of you agree with me on this, and the fundamental point is... It is very brave for you to even yeah, sit here, to even express an opinion, uh, and, and we continue. We continue to say uh, that that is valuable.